What's going on everybody? My name's Lucas and we are back for episode 3 of my self-imposed challenge to play every game in my thousand game Steam library, rating each game on how much I think they're actually worth playing or coming back to. Today we're playing... wait... what was I doing? I can't seem to remember. This note says, talk about amnesia. So, I guess we'll start with the first game, Amnesia The Dark Descent. This game is atmospheric as hell, with a writing style and setting that remind me of a mix of the original Dracula and HP Lovecraft. I really didn't expect to like this game very much, but I was pleasantly surprised. I love that this game has a slow build to horror. Since you play as a character who's taken a drug to erase his memory, there's quite a sense of mystery as you slowly piece everything together through notes and the occasional sight that forces you to recollect the past. The mechanics of the game are also really interesting. You've got a lamp that burns oil and tinder boxes that can be used to light static light sources like torches and candles. But these supplies are somewhat limited. Staying in the light keeps your sanity from depleting, but it also attracts enemies. So you have to strike a balance between being in the light and staying sane or hiding in the dark. When you lose enough sanity, you begin to experience hallucination-like visual effects, which are really unpleasant, and good enough reason to try to retain your sanity. This game controls really well with mouse and keyboard, and that's coming from someone who almost always prefers to play games with a controller. But due to the physics-based way in which you interact with the world, mouse and keyboard is definitely the way to go here. The use of physics-based puzzles is really well implemented here, and makes the player feel all the more immersed. Not to mention the game's excellent sound design. Moving through Castle Brennenberg is eerie and tense, but the game rewards you with calming musical cues whenever you complete a puzzle or a tense situation. Really, any time your sanity is being restored, you get a nice little bit of calming music to go with it. Early on, there's a level where you make your way through some flooded corridors. However, an invisible creature is there, and it will kill you if you stay in the water for any length of time. So, you have to jump from object to object in order to avoid it. I thought this segment was really neat, and thankfully just short enough not to overstay its welcome. Overall, I like the puzzly parts of the game a lot more than the being chased by horrific abominations parts. But I did get so absorbed with the game that I finished the whole thing. In fact, I got so absorbed with this whole series that I bought them all and finished all of them. I also loved the excellent audio dramatizations of Remember, which is a set of five short stories that serve as a prequel to The Dark Descent. I'll put a link to those in the description because they have a criminally low view count for their quality. The game is better than I expected, and pleasantly so. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10 and say it had great pacing and superb ambiance. Next up, we have Amnesia A Machine for Pigs, which is unfortunately a big step down in many regards from The Dark Descent. It seems that it wasn't actually developed by Frictional Games, just published by them, and it shows. It has a more well-decorated world, but the level of interaction is quite diminished. There's a ton of stuff around, but you can't interact with much of it at all. Whereas in The Dark Descent, pretty much everything in the environment you could pick up, move around, doors and drawers could be opened even if they didn't lead to anything. <sighs> if you saw a box in that game, you were free to pick it up and toss it wherever you wanted. You could even build a little box for it if you wanted. I did. It was cozy and safe from monsters. But in a machine for pigs, you're only allowed to interact with very specific things. You can interact with chairs, desk drawers, and a couple of windows, but nothing else. Don't even think of touching that priceless antique vase or so help me. That is, unless it's absolutely necessary to progress, then by all means, go ahead. You see that giant bear? You can touch that. That's because it's part of a puzzle. You see all the things in this room? You see how you can't interact with any of it? Except for this bear? That's because you can move the bear out of the way. That's the only thing that you can touch. Which means all you need to do to progress is figure out which items are interactable, interact with them, and that's it. You've made progress, you've completed the puzzle. Or what passes for a puzzle in this game. They also did away with the inventory screen, so there's no picking things up that might be useful later, 
And on top of that, there's no sanity mechanic in this game. So how am I supposed to know when I'm going insane? I don't know. Precious ego cactus fruit. Help us. But it doesn't really matter because you never really feel like you're in any kind of danger. And even when you are in danger, you're not in any danger. Just give this guy some space. Don't spook him. It's just common courtesy. He's just a good piggy piggy man. Yes, he is. Okay, bye, Mr. Piggy Man. Bye. Oh, what a little scamp. These guys are just so silly and non-threatening, it's ridiculous. The game took all the agency you felt in The Dark Descent and threw it out the window. The game has a story it wants you to see, and you're gonna go through it the way the developers wanted you to go through it. The story and lore are a lot less intriguing than in Dark Descent. It feels like they took a more abstract philosophical approach to the writing which both compels me to learn more and also makes me feel like it doesn't matter at all just because of the way that they've chosen to convey the story. The game also crashes a lot on Modern Hardware. First of all, with both The Dark Descent and A Machine for Pigs, to get them running at a proper resolution on my AMD laptop, I had to go into their Steam folders, right-click on the launcher.exe, go to Properties, then the Compatibility tab, then change High DPI Settings button, then check the box for High DPI Scaling Override, otherwise I couldn't get the game to run at the correct resolution in full screen. The real problem, however, was that every time you would pass through a loading screen, the game decides it just can't be bothered and crashes. The game also does its autosave right after loading screens, so when the game crashes, you're stuck replaying that whole level unless you save and quit. So to get around these crashes, you need to save and quit when you get to a door with a loading screen, which thankfully shows you an icon so you know when they're coming. Then, you've got to lower your settings all to low, change the resolution to specifically 800 by 600, then restart your game for those changes to take effect. Then, go through the loading screen. You've still got a chance that it'll crash, but it's likely you'll get through. Then, once you get through that loading screen, you can raise your settings all back up to high, put it at the proper resolution, and restart your game again. Then you can keep going till you get to the next loading screen and have to do it all over again. The game crashed 27 times in my time with it, and I couldn't even get past a crash near the end of the game, so I eventually had to give up and watch the last 30 minutes of the game on YouTube. And I really don't feel like I missed out on anything. I didn't try a machine for pigs on my desktop, so I don't know, it may play nice with that hardware, who's to say. I didn't enjoy the game enough to find out. At the end of the day, a machine for pigs is very linear. It's not super intriguing, and the crashes are infuriating. 3.5 out of 10. It's not horrible, but it's not good either. It's a walking simulator that is thankfully not very long. The lore is somewhat detached, and while some of it does feel like it fits with the rest of the series, namely the Aztec stuff, a lot of it just feels off. As far as amnesia games go, this one just doesn't do it for me. Next up, we're taking a look at Amnesia Rebirth, a game that I actually didn't realize existed until I bought it on sale along with the bunker after playing Dark Descent. This one is really good, definitely the most lore-rich in the series so far, and I love that. Yes, lore, lore, give me my precious lore. <laughs> The interactivity with the environment is back and better than ever. You even get an achievement if you break enough irreplaceable antique vases, so yeah, they know what's up. It's also the most graphically impressive with some great visuals. To some degree, it trades in the Lovecraftian and Gothic vibes of Dark Descent for more Giger-esque elements in the latter half of the game, which I think really fits. The monsters in this one are genuinely unnerving and threatening, which is refreshing coming from a machine for pigs where most of the enemies couldn't even be persuaded to harm you if you tried. Hi little pigman, hi again, how you doing? Good boy, good piggy man. Okay, bye Mr. Piggy. The darkness feels legitimately dark, and the sanity mechanic of Dark Descent has been replaced with fear mechanic. This causes black tendrils to creep into your vision, your breathing becomes more rapid, and your heart 
beats in your ears. I love that fear kicks in in a variety of fear-inducing situations, not just in the dark, but also while you're high up on a ledge or staring at a mangled corpse or a horrendous monster. There were actually a couple instances that raised my heart rate. There were also a few unexpected jump scares, which was great since my problem with jump scares is that you can usually see them coming from a mile away. They're usually always incredibly predictable and rarely accompanied by actually threatening situations. But here, they're not overdone. They work. The storyline was pretty unique, and presents the player with a few really interesting ethical dilemmas and philosophical ideas. In all the ways A Machine for Pigs failed to make me philosophically intrigued, Rebirth succeeds. I don't want to spoil too much because this one is the most story heavy, and I think that sort of thing is best experienced for oneself. Your character is an artist, and as she remembers things, she sketches them in her notebook. I really liked the sketches in addition to notes and audio. This game also has some of the best voice acting in the series, and also the biggest variety of voiced characters and voiced notes. And as someone who mainly listens to audiobooks these days, I love that. I'm here for it. Rebirth is a worthy sequel to Dark Descent, and definitely the most closely connected in the series so far. This is probably my favorite in the series from a story perspective, and I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10. And rounding out our look at the Amnesia series, we've got the latest title, Amnesia the Bunker. This one's set in a World War I French bunker that happens to be inhabited by a horrible bulletproof mole monster that stalks its dark corridors. And ooh baby, this is a really good game. It has a great sense of exploration and world interaction. The game is based around a centralized safe room that has a lantern which functions as a save point, and a generator that requires fuel to power the lights. You have to manage the amount of lights you have powered on, because the more there are, the faster the generator burns fuel. And trust me, you do not want to be in the middle of a sublevel when the power goes out. There's a good variety of items scattered around, some of which can be combined into more useful items like the classic Molotov cocktail, good for all of your immolation needs. These babies will burn right through any mutated rats and the bodies they feast upon. Now just 12 easy payments of $19.99. But wait, there's more. If you craft right now, I'll throw in the patented Deluxe Rat Be Gone Torch, guaranteed to make those suckers scurry away in no time. I love that you can approach things in a lot of different ways, and you don't feel locked into doing anything you don't want to do. Progression through the game feels very organic, almost Metroidvania-like in a way. You can go wherever you want, but certain places and items are locked behind having tools like a wrench or bolt cutters, and if you don't have them, you'll have to remember to come back later. Often, letters and photographs will contain helpful context for what's going on or where things have gone that people have left behind. All the locker and door codes are randomized for each playthrough, which I think is a great way to keep the player from relying too heavily on guides. The main criticism I have for this game is that I don't like the lack of autosave. Nothing is worse than getting most of the way through an area just to die and be sent back around half an hour. That's just not respectful of my time. It happened a couple of times, but aside from that, the game was very tense and thrilling, and actually reminded me a lot of Alien Isolation. I love that when you beat the game, you unlock a new game plus, in which you can set a custom difficulty with a ton of different parameters. My issue with there not being an autosave feature can easily be fixed in new game plus, with the option to add save lanterns in each of the sub areas. That seems like it would go a long way to eliminating any of the potential tedium. If you want the monster to be super aggressive and the rats to be very passive, you can set them to be how you like. I think the complete difficulty customization is a great addition to the game that along with inherent randomness of the game's items makes me way more likely to play this one again. Though it doesn't have nearly as much lore as The Dark Descent or Rebirth, it does a good job of displaying a more personal story directly resulting from the lore established for the universe it's set in. I had a great time with this one, and I'm giving it another 8.5 out of 10. 
The gameplay here was definitely my favorite in the series, and it was absolutely the one that kept me most on edge. And that'll do it for Amnesia. I'm really glad I finally gave these games a try. I suppose I had imagined them being a lot more frustrating with less interesting storylines, and I'm so happy I was wrong. For the most part, they were way better than I expected, aside from Machine for Pigs. But hey, let me know what you thought of these games in the comments. As always, remember to like and subscribe, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. See you in the next one!